Assalamu alaikum everybody, welcome to lesson 14 in the Ala Uddin series here on the Arabic in 60 Steps channel. So firstly we have an announcement, uh, I did announce it on my Instagram um, page and uh, I haven't, but I haven't heard from the winner yet. So the winner of the Chambers Arabic Vocabulary book is uh, our brother Abdul Rahman Isa. I'll put up his comment here, so my brother. If this is your comment, message me inshallah, either DM me on Instagram at Arabic in 60 Steps or send me an email at sam at Arabic in 60 Steps dot com and we'll ship that out to you probably tomorrow morning. So um, that's everything. I mean, maybe we'll just jump straight into it. I will maybe just let you guys know there is one more space left on the Arabic in 60 Steps program if you want to come and jump in. So let's crack on with this uh, this text inshallah. So well, what do we have? So I'm going to put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. We have fi bayti ala iddin. Why is it ala iddin? Well, it's because it's this is a mudaf ilay. It's the bayt of ala iddin. It is in the house of ala uddin. In this case, ala iddin. Good. Wa fil tali and and on the next day and on the next day, um, yeah, and on the next day. Good. The term tali can mean next, or it can kind of have a meaning of like follow on. The, the, the verb tabi'a means to follow, but um, we, we have the term tilawa, meaning like the recitation of the Quran is your tilawa, um, because you're kind of, um, you're, you're following along with the words, um, tilawa. Good. So on the next day, rahu asahiru. Good. So the sahir, the sorcerer, saw him. Good. We know it's the sahir uh, doing the seeing. Uh, because it has the dhamma on the end. So we know it's the it's the subject of the verb. Good. And what was he doing? Talking about Ala Uddin, of course. وَهُوَ يَلْعَبُ مَعَ رُفَقَائِهِ And he was playing. The verb لَعِبَ يَلْعَبُ is to play. He was playing with his friends. His رُفَقَاء are his friends. Good. فَأَعْطَاهُ دِينَارَيْنِ آخِرَيْنِ Good. So he gave him another two dinars. Good. It's آخر آخرَيْنِ Good. Two, two other dinars. Akhar, the term akhar means another. So he gave him another two dinars. Good. Waqala lahu. And he told him, or he said to him. Um, in English, we have these two verbs to say and to tell. And often people who learn English as a second language struggle with those two, especially, you know, people who speak Spanish, where it's, it's just one verb, the verb defir in Spanish means both of them. Um, but uh, in, in, in Arabic, the way that you, you distinguish between those two verbs, to say and to tell, the verb qala means to say, but qala lishakhsin, to say to a person, um, is to, to tell some, someone. So, so he told him. What did he tell him to do? What did he say to him? He khabbir ummaka. He said khabbir, inform ummaka, inform your mother. Ya ibn akhi, oh, oh son of my brother. Um, that's the way in Arabic that you say nephew. Um, good. Okay. What do we have next? Ennani sa'ata'asha fi baytikuma al-laylata. Nice. So he says, Ennani. Inf so, it, so really it's, it's, Akhabbir ummaka. Inform your mother. Ennani. Inform your mother that I. Sa'ata'asha. Ma ma'ana ata'asha. What does ata'asha mean? It means to have dinner. Um, it's specifically a verb to have dinner. Um, Good. I, I, will, I will have dinner. Fi bayti kuma. In your house. It's not, if it was just fi bayti kum, it would be your house if you're a whole family. But because there's just two of them who live there, there's ala uddin, wa ummuhu, and his mother, it's just kuma, the two of you. When? A lay letter. At night. A lay letter. Often, well, well, always. I mean, it's a, it's, it's the case in, uh, in Arabic that, that, um, what is it, like adverbs of time, they are monsoor, they take fatha. So for example, if he were to say today, he would have said al yawma. there would have been a fatha on the end of it as well. Um, and then the same as when you use the term tomorrow, even when you say ghadan, that is the same in that case. Um, good. Uh, the, the only exception to that is the word emsi, meaning, yes, meaning yesterday. Um, yeah, I mean, because I, because I think that's actually a kind of implied idafa with yawma emsi. Um, and that's why it's Yom MC, it's the day of MC of, of yesterday. Good, but anyway, in this case, it's a lay letter at night time. So I will come and have dinner in your house at night time. Bit presumptuous. If someone said that to me, I'd say, no, you're not. Anyways, for asra, the verb asra, well, the term sadir means fast, but asra, the verb asra means to hurry to do something. For asra, ala uddini. So ala uddin he hurried ila ummihi to his mother. 
good. And gave her the two dinars. وَذَكَرَ لَهَا مَا قَالَهُ السَّاحِرُ Good. وَذَكَرَ And he mentioned. The verb ذَكَرَ يَذْكُرُ Means to mention. لَهَا To her. مَا قَالَهُ What what he said it. Um, literally what he said. But uh, there is a who on the end. That's kind of referring back to the what. So, and mentioned to her that which the sorcerer said. Good. Um, فَاسْتَعَارَتْ أُمَّهُ مِنْ جَارَاتِهَا Good. So, what is the verb istara? That's a nice verb. Istara. Fastarat. It means to borrow. It means to borrow things. So, fastarat ummuhu. So his bo- his his mother borrowed min min jaratiha. So the term the term jar um, means a neighbor, right? But re- usually the plural is jiran. Um, so, but it, it isn't jiraniha. It's um, jaratiha, meaning. Um, given us the, the 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 meaning that it's from female neighbors, right? She rushed around to the other mums and stuff. Good. فَاسْتَعَارَتْ أُمَّهُ مِنْ جَارَاتِهَا From her female neighbors. بَعْضُ الْأَوَانِ What are the الْأَوَانِ? They are utensils that you might use for cooking or laying the table and stuff. I assume in this case it's for laying the table because it says الْأَوَانِ الثَّمِينَ If they are thameen, it means they are valuable um, or precious. Um, you know, to kind of impress the guests. You'll have nice glasses and plates and stuff. You'll have your best china out to impress the guests. Good. This term femin, um, yeah, it means, means valuable. Literally, the term effemin is the value of something. Um, you, can use, um, you can use the term ethmen uh, to mean, like, more valuable. This is more valuable or more precious than that. وَأَعَدَّتْ the verb add li something, although we haven't seen the li yet, uh, means to prepare something for somebody. وَأَعَدَّتْ لَهُ عَشَاءً فَاخِرًا So he prepa- so she prepared for him. عَشَاءً عَشَاء is from the same verb ta'asha as we, we saw earlier. Or from the same roots rather, not the same verb as such. Um, it means a dinner. Um, it's probably by no coincidence that, that, the term, that, that the term for the salatu l'isha is in the evening, right? But your asha, your asha, rather than your isha, your isha is the salah, right? It's the time, the time of the day when you pray the, pray the isha with a kasra on the ayn. But when there's a fatha on the ayn and it's asha, it means the meal in the evening. Fakhiran. Fakhiran means um, luxurious, perhaps you, you, you might say. Um, um, the, 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 the root, those root letters are to do with kind of having pride and being... Um, um, yeah, being proud, but in this case, it's like a luxurious dinner. It's a, it's a dinner to be proud of, or something like that. Um, there's a there's a song in Arabic about being Somali that I remember hearing ages ago. Somali wa aftakhir. Um, yeah, aftakhir means I'm proud. So like Somali, I'm proud. Somali wa aftakhir. Cool. So that's everything for this video. Um, I think it was pretty brief, nice and brief. We covered some new, new vocabulary, perhaps to, to reiterate some of the vocabulary, which I think might be new to a number of you, uh, would perhaps be um, the word ta'asha. Ta'asha would probably be a key piece of vocabulary, meaning to dine. Um, perhaps the word asra, the verb asra, meaning to, um, yeah, meaning to hurry somewhere. Uh, maybe the word um, istara, meaning to borrow. Um, Good, and maybe the word jarat, meaning female neighbours, or jiran, if it's the more general, not specifically female. Um, the word al-awani, meaning utensils. Um, thameen, meaning valuable, and the verb a'adda, to prepare, le, for somebody. So there's maybe a couple of others, but I think that's pretty comprehensive. So in the next lesson, we will be continuing with the same paragraph. Um, yeah, we go down in the next paragraph, it is walamma ja'a al and when the night came. And then we'll continue from, continue from there, inshallah. So we only have two more days left. We're going to go up to lesson 16. And as I mentioned in the last lesson, we are creating a little ebook, which we've already started piecing together. Um, yeah, I'll show you the uh, kind of the, the, the uh, prototype front cover for it very, very briefly. So uh, uh, I'm not going to show you too much of it. But we have started putting it together. And um, yeah, it's going to be the first 16 lessons. And, you know, we, we've reached about, by, by the end, by the time we come to Friday and we've done lesson 16, we will have reached about a quarter of this book. So it might give us a good opportunity to put together like a four book series, which covers the entire book. 
Um, that's something that, that, that we can consider if we want to continue reading this. But from the comments, it seems like lots of you just love the Arabic poetry stuff that we do. So maybe we'll, we'll shift the focus to some more Arabic poetry. So um, yeah, so as I say, that's everything for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to like and share it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and come back tomorrow for lesson 15. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.